All right, so we got the John Deere here in the shop, and we're gonna try and just kind of dive into it. Um, this is probably gonna be a really long video, but for me it's gonna be in parts, but for you it's gonna be one long video. So what I did get for this John Deere, just for the motor side of things, was a brand new carburetor off of Amazon. For like 17 bucks and it came with fuel line fuel filter gaskets the barb fitting um, fuel shut off and some uh, wire uh, fuel line uh, crimps things but as two years went by um, this bracket was freshly painted silver and it's now rusted away um, this coil was decently new and it looks like it's been through Vietnam and back already but I think I already have plans for this motor if it doesn't work out um, I'm gonna try to put it in the 1282 and if that doesn't work um, I got an 8 horse Kohler but yeah the uh, carburetor is all seized up stuff like that so yeah we're gonna get a battery charger or something um, and see if this motor still cranks over because that will be the cool part and we'll go from there so stay tuned got the carburetor off and yeah this thing's all corroded and that used to be mush if you guys remember back to my 4th of July video that was that's yeah, still kind of mushy but yeah and there's a little bit of that into the intake too so I would probably think that that valve is probably stuck so I'll probably pull off the head and get a head gasket and just go through the valves see if those are working just fine and yeah this carburetor is just pooched it's done it's garbage and yeah Walboro that's a pretty good carburetor not for this style, but, well, this one's seen a pretty rough life. Sounds like the fuel bowl still moves. But, we're not going to dig into that just yet. Um, we'll probably dive into it and see how bad it really is. But, we got a brand new, good looking one right here. Um, it's for a Kohler. Um, it's just a little cheapy. But it will get us by instead of using this thing that's just totally destroyed. So, yeah. So, new, old. So, yeah. So, let's pull off the head so we don't crank this thing over dry and suck in all that nastiness. So, yeah.
Well, at least this is a good sign. This motor was seized up or something. It's on top dead center. And this motor's got STDs. <laughs> it's got a standard bore in it, so that's cool. This motor's never been tinkered with or rebuilt. So now we can get a battery charger. Um, I'll probably do all this stuff tomorrow after work. Um, we'll crank it over and we will uh, see if these valves want to move. And we'll clean out the intake port and look at some of this wiring because this thing is just kind of cobbled together. Um, I know I really didn't show it too much when I had it like two years ago when I was working on it, but it's just kind of thrown together with some house wires. Um, I would believe that would be a kill switch. Um, I don't really know. But I'm gonna do some research. Um, let me know down in the comments if you guys know about these rear ends and these 110s on why they're stuck in gear before we get to that so I kind of have a brief idea before we get to the rear end um, we're going to kind of work our way from the front to the back so I just want to see if the motor runs if the motor runs it'll be worth it and if the rear end's junk then we can just sell the tractor as is and just move on or just keep it and maybe I'll come across another rear end or something so yeah I'm gonna head out and I will see you guys all day alrighty so I kind of skipped ahead um, that valve is stuck I kind of spun it over by hand and we're gonna see if we can get it to jump yeah, that valve is stuck knock it back down Hey, it's starting to work. Put some pressure on that valve. <laughs> Woo, all right, that's awesome. See if I can get it to where that valve stays open. There it goes. Alright, that's good enough. Turn the jump box off. So now, while it just sits here, you can spray some WD-40 down in there and let it soak, let it do its thing. Um, the key switch doesn't work, but at least we know it turns over and there's no rust. The cylinder walls are smooth, they're clean. And yeah, it just has some pretty good potential. So, and for some reason the tractor didn't start rolling either when it was cranking over so let's see if we can make this tractor you know move so let's all right this might be a little sketchy oh jesus What happened? 
I don't want to do it too long because, I don't know, start a generator. Alright, let's turn that off. PTO works. That worked. Now on the rear end, still nothing. So I'm gonna pull off this little hoop thing. And maybe the shifter boot cover. And let's see what we can come up with now. Wrong side. Size do you want to be? Yeah, and that's a different size. It's weird how John Deere works. They put three different size bolts. That's weird. It's not saying John Deere is weird, it's just. Oh boy. That looks a little rusty crunchy. Rusty crunchy. Yeah, I don't think that made any sense. But we're gonna fly with it. It's a new word. to the thunder. So you can't get it out. I know my little winter project was going to be my 1282, but I don't know when the guy wants to do the motor swap in his tractor to get my motor. So... I just decided to work on this instead, just to kill some time. But a lot of you guys said in the comments in the last video that these round thunders are pretty popular. And they are. And there's another bolt. That's our problem right there. Will it roll? No. Why will it not roll? Of 
still gonna roll. It's almost like the rear end is like seized up. Should be neutral. And it's still still locked up. Let's try this. Seems like there's something going on up here and it's not traveling back to here. So there might be another problem. So we're gonna leave that as a mystery, but we're still gonna get the motor to run and fix up some of the wiring. So that is it for today, as I said for the second time. And I'm gonna go in get some dinner and I will see you guys probably this weekend so I will put up the day when this video comes back up so I will see you guys all day. All right, this might be a little sketchy and Might be a little sketchy. <laughs> Alrighty, so we left off checking the valves. We got the valves unstuck, and it's now Friday night, thank God. And I looked through my stash of Kohler parts, and I had a Brand new head gasket laying around, so we are going to use that on this. But I'm going to clean up all the extra head gasket from the old head gasket. And we're going to see if this thing will maybe fire up tonight. So that will be pretty cool. I know this transmission is probably junk, but hey, if I can get the motor to run, that will be just icing on the cake and then maybe we can spin the whole tractor around pull the rear end out rear rear end out and see ouch my finger got stuck so there it is top dead center so let's get a wire wheel and kind of clean up all that nastiness of that old hip Now we got the old residue off the head or pretty much block. Um, I kind of shined her up pretty good. Um, I couldn't really get around these edges so I'm going to try to use just a regular wire brush and try to get as best I can so that doesn't prevent another head gasket leak or blow up. So let me get a wire brush and we will try to see if we can scrape away that stuff. Spray a little WD-40 to kind of loosen it up. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Oh yeah, comes off just like a chair. I know I could probably just take these studs out, but I've seen a lot of people break the studs and then they're screwed and you have to use an easy out. I'll just try to take the extra 10 minutes and use a wire brush and get around it without taking, taking them out. Just can't talk today. But I decided to spend my Friday night not
staying in the house and relaxing from work. But instead I would rather be out here in my happy place and talk to you guys. And maybe get the tractor to run tonight. Of course you guys will see it run in one long video, but for me it takes multiple videos, video clips, and stuff like that. You guys understand. set our new head gasket in. Um, it only goes on one way. Just like that. And we can get our head, which doesn't look too bad, so I'm not going to worry about cleaning it, just for old time's sake. So Let's set her down in. Don't lose the washers. Make sure your holes line up and then you can put your head bolts in. And no. So I'm gonna do the old fashioned torquing down to <clears throat> just for you know testing purposes and then I will go back through and Tighten them up after we hear it run. So I'm not going to over torque them. I'm not going to under torque them. It's going to be the good old. Mm. That's always the torque specs that I've used, and they've worked out pretty good. Um, I've never had a head gasket blow out, or a stub was, or a bolt was too tight and it broke, or I just happened to over tighten it and screwed up the threads so yeah I will catch up to you guys when I get all this stuff tightened down so click 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 So now, the head is all back on, and the valve is working. So now we can kind of focus on the front of the motor, which you guys can't see, because this is in the way, and those are a pain in the butt to get out. Uh, let me try to get you guys on a good angle. Alright, <laughs> that's going to be about as good as it's going to get. Um, so now... This wire, I know I'm hooked up right there, but yeah, right? Where the heck did this wire go? Hmm. Well, I think this was our power wire, and I just used this, yeah, to jump it to the, uh, starting side so we got our points wire our condenser so now we just have to see if we can take these nuts off without breaking them so all right i just need to quit saying all right but you know that's how a lot of people say it so but we're going to take off the nuts clean up this connection and so it's a lot easier for us so when it tries to, or if it tries to fire it'll have a good connection well, that wire just came off so that's that's good we're going to take it out all the way so we can get our wire brush down in there and clean it. And 
these connections this one goes to the point so this is probably really important well everything is really important you get spark so you know be good enough here's the condenser wire I have to try to rub onto the point or the coil it doesn't look too bad but we can use it for testing purposes. Alright. Take this lock washer off. And well, look at all that dust. So it cleaned up a lot easier. And let's try this wire. This wire looks kind of split. So hopefully it doesn't short out from here to the wherever it goes. Here. Run that nut halfway down. Pop the ring. Maybe I'll get some pliers and kind of close up that gap. That gap looks a wee bit big. Yes, I know these ain't pliers, these are needle nose. They were laying on top, so I just decided to use There we go. There, now I got more of a tighter fit. I'll get, get back with you guys when I get off. All right, that was a that was a doozy. Working in a tight spot isn't very uh, good for me with big hands. So I'm going to throw on the carburetor. I'm going to throw you guys on time lapse. I'm going to throw this carburetor on. And well first we're going to check the points. See if they're gapped correctly and we're going to sand them down so they get a good connection. So yeah. So but that's going to be all on time lapse. So. so that you know the intake port was all you know really corroded and rusty and stuff well I forgot I had my little mini hone and I pretty much destroyed it but I just have to replace the uh, pads which I do have but you guys can just see look how much better that looks 
Like, that's going to be awesome. So, yeah, I really did a really good job. Let me see if I can get you guys a better picture. There it is. Alright. So, that's going to be a lot better. I'm using a little light so you guys can see on camera a little bit better what I'm doing. So, now, we're going to throw the carburetor on. And, moment of truth, see if we can get it see if we get any spark first and then we'll try a little bit of fuel so fingers crossed all right so this is where I just let the camera roll and now we're gonna see if it has any spark and if it does we'll try a little bit of fuel and see if we can get an explosion a nice explosion so now let's just see if this thing will even crank over with compression and see if it has anything. Hopefully I have something to uh, light this thing off. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh oh. Hmm. Oh, battery's dead on the battery charger. That kind of sucks. So, I will catch up with you guys in the morning. And we will see if this thing will fire. Alrighty. So, I got a few things done. I got the linkage to fit inside one of the little holes on the carburetor. And I just disconnected the battery. Um, we're going to pull the battery out so we can kind of see why the ignition switch doesn't really want to work. Um, I kind of realized that from the last time, that it never really wanted to click on. Um, I put this back on, the little gear selector. But, yeah, let's take this out. Oh my god. So, it's a little rusty. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely rusty. So it's definitely gonna need new cables. Um, I don't know what else would be down in there. Hopefully nothing dead. So yeah, there's the voltage regulator, uh, solenoid right there. So yeah, everything's kind of tucked away inside the dash, so that's going to make things a lot easier. So I think what we're going to do is remove this bracket right here, um, which is four bolts on each side, two on each side. Um, this will pop off, and then we'll probably pull off the generator. Um, I still don't know if the motor runs or the transmission works. So we're going to save that for last, but I want to get the key switch to work and maybe get a throttle cable so we can get that to move and stuff. So. Alright, so I took out all the bolts that were holding this battery tray in, the gas tank. So now it should... Not eating too hard. Looks like the voltage regulator is folded to it.
a few more bolts. Alright, alright. Let's try that again. So we got wires. I don't even know where this thing goes. It goes to the back somewhere. Get away with that thing. I just want to see how we can unbolt the voltage regulator off of this box. It appears to be right down here. Alright, this looks like it's going to be a, a nightmare. So I'll get back with you guys when I get this whole dash apart. Woo! Alright. After like 20 minutes of fighting four rusty bolts that hold the solenoid and the voltage regulator on. Oh, my bad. Woo! What's that? So at least now we can look and get the things and spray things with WD-40 that never got sprayed in like 20 plus years. So set all that stuff to the side. So what we're looking at is what appears to be a mouse nest. So I'm going to get the vacuum, vacuum out all this stuff, and just make it look more human friendly instead of, hey look, that's my home. So I'm going to vacuum all that stuff up. Alright, so all that stuff is cleared out for what I can get to. Um, it's It doesn't look that rusty in person, but it's it's bad but it's you know savable to where you're not really replacing the metal but now we can just spray this whole inside with WD-40 and just well I mean everything still works but it's just just get some WD-40 on it so it doesn't seize up in the future so yeah so I'm gonna leave off here for today um, I'm gonna pick this back up maybe later today see if we can get the engine to kind of puff a little bit of smoke um, I found out what this jumper wire did two years ago uh, I ran it from the starter wire on the starting side of the post and I ran it to the positive side or the negative side I can't remember probably the positive side of the coil to give it spark so we got spark and I have a fuel tank off of a push mower I'm going to rig up and put on this so we can see if it starts. So I think that's going to conclude this video um, with this thing firing up. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and you guys will see this tractor in the near future so probably of maybe the rear end moving at the same time when we get the motor running. So thank you guys so much. Maybe it will just on seas. So. We'll see if it wants to move when the engine's running. If not, we'll tear into the transmission. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys all later. See you.
Alright. This will tell if the transmission will work. It moved. That sucker just moved. Ah. Alright. Well, that's probably as far as I'm going to get with this tractor. I'm probably going to put it all back together. Um, just not the battery thing for the voltage regulator and the solenoid. And it's going to be in a tarp because I might be restoring this my 62 original again so I don't know but I'm gonna do gaskets and if I decide to look forward to some uh, videos coming out on that so thank you guys so much for watching on this series will it run of this John Deere 110 that I got and I'll catch you guys next time I, I, I'm famous.